Hello, my name is Vincent Ho, and I'm going to be talking about MR angiography techniques. So there are a variety of MR angiography techniques. It's simpler to uh, divide them into non-contrast and contrast-enhanced MRA, and that will be the sequence that I describe each of the techniques. Probably the oldest technique is time-of-flight MRA. This is based on the inflow effect that uh, fully magnetized protons experience when they enter an imaging slice, the so-called Washam phenomenon, or flow-related enhancement. Uh, that we hear about with imaging. In this technique, the protons uh, entering a imaging slice in this cartoon, either from the left or the right, generate a bright signal within the vessel. You can uh, generate selective visualization of arteries or veins based on the direction of flow by the application of selective saturation bands to saturate the spins coming from one direction or the other within the imaging slice. So if you take the original cartoon schematic, and you apply a, a saturation band to the uh, left of the imaging slice, you will saturate the spins coming in from the left such that you only see the spins coming from the right-hand side of the uh, image uh, generating that bright signal. Alternatively, if you put the saturation band on the right-hand side of the imaging slice, you will suppress the uh, flow coming from the right-hand side, thus selectively visualiz visualizing the um, flow within the uh, vessel on the top. There are a number of artifacts or concerns related to time of flight imaging. Uh, saturation effects is one of those that can be quite significant. In this phenomenon, if you have an imaging slice or imaging volume in the case of 3D, which is too big, the uh, persistence of the spins within the imaging slice gets saturated during the course of their trans transit through the imaging region such that their overall signal intensity is, is darker than, than expected. You can see a similar saturation effect or spin saturation effect in the case of a high-grade stenosis of an artery, in which case the velocities are slow and there's persistence of the protons within the imaging slice such that the repetitive RF pulses that are administered during the time of flight acquisition result in spin saturation and, once again, a suboptimal uh, signal intensity of the vessel. Another pitfall for time of flight is uh, related to pulsatility, the to and fro motion, especially in the distal aortoiliac segments, uh, whereby the saturation bands, which are applied inferiorly in this case, uh, return into the imaging slice, creating these black bands or Venetian blind artifacts. You can remove this artifact by synchronizing the acquisition with the systolic phase. Cardiac gating overall, however, will increase your acquisition times significantly. So the result of all of these uh, concerns related to uh, time of flight uh, result in overestimation of stenosis. To the degree, sometimes it may mimic a vascular occlusion, uh, which is one of the pitfalls for a flow-based technique like time of flight. Another uh, common technique uh, for non-contrast imaging is phase contrast uh, MRA. In phase contrast, we rely on the phase shifts that protons experience when they move along a gradient field. Selective arterial and venous segmentation is achieved by proper uh, setting of the velocity encoding and direction of prescription for the phase contrast. Low velocity encoding is for venous flow, high velocity encoding for arterial flow. And the direction uh, can be in uh, any of the cardinal planes or through the slice or, or within an imaging volume. And you can uh, achieve differentiation of the directional flow by looking at the phase map images. So this is a axially acquired uh, 3D phase contrast MRA. These are coronal projections that were divided into both a bright and a dark uh, maximum intensity projection. Uh, and then the bright pixels were uh, actually isolated for right-left flow. So on this uh, <clears throat> slide, you can see the uh, right-to-left flow within the right renal vein and within the left renal artery. If you look at the bottom, which is the minimum intensity projection where all the black pixels are represented, you see left-to-right flow where you see left renal vein and right renal artery. One of the pitfalls of phase contrast is akin to time of flight in that it's a flow-based technique. So if there's high-grade stenosis as shown in this case, where you have a patient with a high-grade renal artery stenosis, uh, there is actually loss of signal in the area of stenosis where it actually looks obstructed. In fact, it actually is um, uh, patent, but it, the high-grade stenosis, uh, the loss of the phase coherence, the intravoxel dephasing, uh, causes a, a loss of the phase coherence so that you do not see signal in that region. There are also some other concerns related to phase contrast. A lot of times it's very difficult a priori when you're prescribing the pulse sequence to know what the velocity or the direction of the flow in, in the structure is, is supposed to be. Uh, with phase contrast, since you have to perform 
the uh, gradient application in all three planes, uh, it generally is a longer acquisition than time of flight. One thing to keep in mind, this is a different uh, patient on the right-hand side, uh, that phase contrast still works after the administration of gadolinium. In fact, the phase contrast signal is, is quite significant after administration of gadolinium. And so um, we'll talk about GAD enhanced MRA a little bit later. Uh, when you do have a failure of a, a GAD enhanced MRA, you can perform a phase contrast uh, to supplement the experience. So here's such a case. This is a patient who had a GAD enhanced MRA where there was very poor visualization of the left renal artery in this patient who could not hold his breath during the, the um, acquisition, which uh, raised the question whether or not there was a left renal artery stenosis. But when you look at the 3 dpc which was a form uh, free breathing actually in the same individual, it was just an early bifurcation of the left renal artery. And in, in fact, the, the renal arteries were, were open and patent without evidence of a significant stenosis. Phase contrast has been used for uh, nearly 20 years for a variety of uh, uh, indications. It can be used very uh, easily to look at uh, valvular assessment, especially for recurgent fractions or gradient stenosis. Uh, left to right shunt quantification, QPQS ratios can also be performed using phase contrast uh, MR. There are some other things related to phase contrast that are kind of uh, interesting in, in that you can look at the direction of flow uh, to help in complex flow situations. Here's an example of phase contrast flow analysis whereby a region of interest which defines a ascending aorta, defining the area in the flow equation, uh, you take the information from that cursor to define the mean velocity within that phase of the cardiac cycle. You can measure each of these phases and you can actually uh, see the flow over the cardiac cycle and indeed identify the 40% aortic regurgent fraction as a diastolic flow um, below the zero line going in the reverse uh, direction. Steady state free precession is another non-contrast technique. Uh, it relies on a T2 over T1 ratio. Uh, there is some inflow effect uh, this is a very fast uh, pulse sequence. Uh, here we have two breath hold acquisitions, both in the coronal sagittal plane with a free breathing axial acquisition with cardiac gating. Uh, and this was all performed within a span of five minutes. Uh, this technique is actually very robust for uh, uh, prescription of MRA, as well as a quick uh, view of the vascular structures within the chest or abdomen. Uh, this is a preferred way of looking at for DVT or central venous thrombus. It's also used for looking at the coronary arteries. Here are some select views of the coronary arteries uh, that were uh, achieved during a 3D SSFP coronary MRA. There are some newer non-contrast uh, pulse sequences, uh, one of which is a cardiac-gated fast spin echo MRA. It's, it's known by a variety of different terms based on the vendor. The principle is really to, uh, to image during the systolic and diastolic phases. Uh, and then using these differences in the gen generated images, you can uh, get selective arterial or venous images. The concerns really are that you need to use cardiac gating. There is uh, slow arterial flow, which is a problem uh, for this acquisition. And occasionally because of the longer acquisitions, a motion, bulk motion can actually be a problem and an artifact of the acquisition itself. So using a cardiac gated uh, fast spin echo technique, you get diastolic uh, image which has arterial and venous images, then you get systolic phased image where preferentially you see uh, mainly the arteries by subtracting the two. Uh, you actually get a, a, a more selective appearance of the arterial structures as shown on the right. There are a number of, of studies that were done to, to look at this. Uh, that have uh, found fairly reasonable sensitivities and specificities. Suffice to say that the this is a flow-based technique with a lot of the same kind of uh, concerns that we talked about with time of flight uh, in that, uh, you know, as far as the um, specificity of some of the areas in the area, it may not be as good. Another technique for non-contrast imaging is advanced inflow MRA. Uh, once again, there are a number of different terms based on the vendor that uh, uh, of the platform that you're using. Essentially, this is an improved time of flight where the inflow effect is, is uh, augmented using a variety of different techniques, cardiac gating being one of those uh, that's used. This is actually uh, a renal MRA that was performed. Uh, Jim Glockner in 2010 found a fairly reasonable uh, experience using the advanced inflow MRA compared to contrast enhanced MRA. So uh, to summarize the non-contrast applications, we talked about time of flight. This is ideal for intracranial arteries and carotid artery visualization. 
Phase contrast generally is used for flow analysis and for problem solving, especially in patients with congenital heart disease. SSFP is a very fast acquisition that can be done for localization of the arterial or venous structures. Uh, it's good for looking at the coronary artery, arteries, the thoracic aorta, and in the case of suspected deep venous thrombosis, looking at the venous structures. Cardiac-aided uh, fast spin echo has been uh, shown to be helpful for evaluation of the, of the abdominal aorta and peripheral arteries. Advanced inflow imaging, especially for the uh, renal arteries and visceral arteries, can be helpful. One thing to keep in mind with non-contrast MRA techniques, however, is that they generally are more time-consuming, uh, which uh, also results in somewhat suboptimal visualization of the structure sometimes, which can complicate interpretation. may not always work in, in all cases. Uh, it, this may be better when you have normal vessels, normal flow patterns. And if you do see normal structures, uh, then there is a fairly uh, high negative predictive value. So finally, getting to the contrast and enhanced MRA techniques, the principle of GAD enhanced MRA is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, essentially, you generate a luminogram whereby the arrival of gadolinium chelate into the blood vessels of your uh, target vasculature creates T1 shortening uh, and the image contrast between uh, the arterial bed and the um, background tissue. The key to this, of course, is timing. Uh, and here, here's an example of a GAD enhanced MRA uh, compared to a standard non-contrast uh, 3D time of flight MRA, and, and the patient has an ulcerated plaque, which you barely see on the time of flight, but you see very clearly on the GAD enhanced MRA. Keep in mind that by administering contrast, you'd see the lumen of the vessel much more clearly. So the key to GAD enhanced MRA is really timing. And more specifically, you want to time the center of case space acquisition with the peak arterial uh, enhancement of the structure that you're trying to image. The center of case space in particular is important. The center of case space where, is where the low spatial frequency data, most of the image contrast for the acquisition is acquired compared to the outer lines of case space or the high spatial frequency data uh, where your edge and the sharpness of your structures are, are determined. So there are a variety of ways to uh, acquire a GAD enhanced MRA based on the pulse sequence and the case space scheme. Uh, they're, they're, they have several that I'll go over real quickly. So in the conventional sequential acquisition, you start at one end of case space and you get sequential KY lines over time such that the center of case space is acquired during the middle of the acquisition. So if you have a 30 second acquisition, the middle of case space is being acquired around the 15 second mark. There's a centric phase ordering, in which case you alternate uh, up and down uh, uh, around the center uh, lines of case space, whereby the center of case space is acquired early in the acquisition. This provides improvement for timing of the acquisition uh, when you're trying to uh, coordinate the center of case space with the bolus itself. There's a tighter way to acquire the center of case space called the elliptical centric, whereby you spiral essentially from the zero zero mark outwards to the next uh, closest mark uh, from the center uh, so that the center of case space is acquired very, very compactly. Th this is really good where you have a very short arterial venous window as in the, in the case of the carotid arteries, which, which could be as brief as five seconds. Then you have partial Fourier imaging, uh, where you start at the outer lines of case space and acquire a little bit over half of the acquisition, uh, and you enter, you 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 end at the uh, center of case space, um, and this is actually a speedy way of acquiring MRA. The main pitfall of this technique is that you take a hit in terms of signal noise. The administration of gadolinium, however, provides sufficient signal noise to over, overcome any kind of uh, loss uh, because of this uh, strategy. Another way of doing uh, this is do a reverse uh, partial Fourier, in which case you start at the center of case space and go towards the outer edge. This has benefits in that the center is acquired early in the acquisition, uh, once again allowing you to, uh, to better coordinate the uh, center of case space acquisition with the arrival of the bolus, but also a much uh, faster acquisition for the MRA experience uh, overall. So the, the, the question is, when do you uh, know when to start the imaging relative to the bolus delivery? Well, probably the easiest way to do, it, do this is to do a test bolus. The key here is that you want to image at least uh, one image every one to two seconds, and this is using one to two mLs uh, at two mLs per second injected. 
Uh, and then you can get a pattern such as this. You can show in a carotid test bolus, you see a brisk upstroke of the carotid artery enhancement, uh, and then you can see jugular venous enhancement uh, delayed as well. And the difference between the peaks is your difference of the arterial venous uh, duration. Uh, so you know how much time you have before there's significant venous contamination of the imaging field. Another way of doing this is using a real-time trigger. Most of the vendors have this where there's a fluoroscopic image which is provided the operator and when you see filling of the aorta the operator manually uh, triggers the acquisition of the 3D MRA and generally you can get a, a good GAD enhanced MRA timing using this technique. Uh, there's another technique which is automated where you can place a volume within a target vessel of, of interest uh, this is commonly used in CT, but also can be used in MR, uh, whereby the um, elevation of the signal uh, within the trigger volume will, will initiate the MRA sequence, uh, and you can usually get a fairly reliable MRA using this technique. Now, in some cases, timing is always a problem, in which case you can do a multi-phase acquisition. Most of the vendors have this. There's several different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can sequentially just acquire 3D volumes one after the other, or you can use some kind of uh, more advanced algorithm where the center lines of case space are oversampled and the outer lines of case space are shared across the imaging period so that you can get discrete 3D volumes. So case space schemes have, uh, are one of the things that uh, we, we have to consider, uh, but there's another artifact if we don't coordinate this in the center of case spaces acquired too early. This so-called uh, ringing artifact, uh, which was de uh, described by Jeff Mackey uh, years ago. And the ringing artifact uh, results because the case space acquisition, the center of case space, is being acquired during the rapid fluctuation of signal with the bullet's arrival. And so if you're imaging too early, you see these alternating black and white, white um, rings around the structure of interest causing this ringing uh, type of artifact. So if you time everything well, uh, ideally you can get fairly high quality GAN enhanced MRAs. This is a patient with fibromuscular dysplasia. On the right hand side is a dig digital subtraction uh, uh, angiography showing the, the typical beaded appearance of that right renal artery. And on the MRA, which is shown on the left, you can see a, a fairly a similar beaded appearance in the same individual. So if you can, if you do this well, you can actually uh, get fairly high quality MRA. Uh, this can't be guaranteed all the time, but it is nice when you can uh, achieve it once in a while. So in summary, I've, I've talked about a variety of MRA techniques. Uh, there's a non-contrast techniques of time of flight, which is, is good for uh, intracranial and carotid arteries, phase contrast for flow analysis, uh, SSFP, steady state free precession is good for looking at the thoracic aorta, coronary arteries, and looking for venous thrombus. Contrast enhanced MRA is, is good for most other arterial uh, territories. The administration of gadolinium provides a, an extra uh, boost to the arterial signal. It's, it's much quicker uh, that you can cover large territories such as the peripheral arteries using GAD enhanced MRA. Technique is very important and one other thing to keep in mind with contrast and enhanced MRA is to recognize the artifacts uh, that can occur.